Hello, I'm Jill McDonald and I'm here to talk to you today about Lightroom Essentials. Now it's a big subject and I have a short webinar session so I will only be able to skim the surface very high level just to describe the scope of Lightroom, what its concepts are, how you get started and what the principles of importing pictures and editing them within Lightroom are. As I say, it's going to be very high level. Uh, I'm the feature editor of Ocean Geographic. I do um, writing, editing, photographs, and I've been involved with the magazine since issue one in 2007. I also teach my own courses, underwater photography and Lightroom, uh, either online via Skype or Zoom or in Grand Cayman when things get settled again, hopefully soon. So if you're interested in any of that, please let me know. There's a question and answer session after the webinar, so please do ask any questions. Right, I'm going to get started straight in. Uh, I'm just going to share this uh, presentation I have, fairly short presentation, describing Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic because that is its full name. There are two versions of Lightroom currently supported by Adobe. One is the Classic and one is the Creative Cloud version. As it says on the tin, this version is cloud-based, but I believe that the cloud is really just a big hard drive in someone else's backyard. I prefer to have my own hard drives, so I don't use cloud versions. I use the classic version. It's also got more functionality. It's based on the original version. And it also is cloud-based if you use the cloud version. And often when you're in the field or you're, you're on a liverboard, you're at a dive center in a remote place, you don't have the internet. So using a cloud-based version doesn't make sense for underwater photography in my mind. So I highly recommend using the classic version. So what is Lightroom? It's a tool which allows us to organize and manage our photographs, to edit and improve our photographs, and to export and share our photographs, however we wish to do that. Other tools allow editing of pictures, but Lightroom is a true end-to-end -end workflow application. Um, and why has it become so popular? Because it has taken a complicated photographic workflow and made it simple. It speeded it up because you can do multiple changes at the same time, multiple actions at the same time uh, across many photographs. And it's given us the ability to edit and get professional results, whatever level we're at. Photoshop and other editing tools are useful, but they're linear. You have to open the photograph, edit it, close it again. Lightroom works on a referencing system based inside a catalog. Now a catalog is, uh, holds only a reference to the pictures. The photographs themselves are not in Lightroom. And it's a mistake I've had other students of mine have made when they first started out, is that when you import into Lightroom, you think you're putting your pictures into Lightroom, you're not. Your pictures are going wherever you decide you want them to go. And in my case, that is on an external hard drive attached to my laptop. So I'll just explain that. Now, Lightroom editing can turn this lovely turtle into this lovelier turtle. And I can turn this uh, beach scene in Cayman into this beautiful scene. But first, it's important to understand the scope of Lightroom rather than just launch into the editing. What does workflow mean exactly? Well, in this case, it means take your memory card out of your camera after you come up from your dive, put it into your laptop, wash through using Lightroom onto your hard drive. And by that, I mean we are using Lightroom as our tool in order to import our photographs and create a catalogue a reference to the photographs, but the photographs themselves are going onto um, an external hard drive in my case. And then from then, after the whole process, you can export them out for various purposes, social media, printing, publishing, whatever. Um, but until you choose to export them out for any purpose, 
they sit on your hard drive and they don't change. The original photograph does not change. So a very key thing here, before you open Lightroom, is choose where to store your photographs. So before you even open Lightroom, you need to select a file structure and a storage system that works for you. You hear all these words about Lightroom, catalog, workflow, external hard drive, folder import. So where are your actual photos? Well, they're where you decide to put them. This is my own personal file structure, or it was when I took this screenshot. Uh, I, this is my master hard drive, external, and I have three main folders, underwater, land, and exports. Now in my underwater folder, I have each uh, country and I have a catalogue per country. Catalogues can be a little controversial. Some people think it's a good idea just to have one catalogue and put all your photographs into it. Other people use catalogues at a lower level, so maybe one per trip. This to me is far too granular. Um, you can only ever look at one catalogue at a time, so it's a good idea to split them into something that makes sense to you. For me, it's by country. So I have a catalogue by country, Caribbean being, I call that one country. Uh, so that works for me. For you, if you go on one, two, three trips a year, perhaps it might make more sense to have it per year. That would make sense. But sometimes it's not a good idea to have everything in one place. If you have everything in one large catalogue, then the catalogue fails. It's not going to be pretty. So the big reveal again, which I've already mentioned, is that when you import your photographs into Lightroom, they're not stored in Lightroom. They're stored in whatever file structure you create on your hard drive to start with. So just to really reiterate that again, your catalogue in Lightroom is like a digital catalogue of a hardware store, as shown here. The actual hardware, in our case the photographs, are stored in an external hard drive, which is the equivalent of the warehouse. The photographs themselves are not in the catalogue, they are in the warehouse. The catalogue is simply pointing at them, and that's how the Lightroom catalogue works. So the next stage after you've decided what your file structure is going to be is to create a catalogue in Lightroom. This is a catalogue I've created. Um, when I go into Lightroom, the very first time you go in, I highly recommend going into your Lightroom tab, your preferences, and just down here, um, about an inch or two down, you'll see default catalogue. And in there, Lightroom defaults to load most recent catalogue. I very strongly recommend you change that in the drop down menu to prompt me when starting Lightroom. This means that when you have multiple catalogues, which I do recommend, um, then you can select which one you want to use. Otherwise it just defaults straight into the last one you used and that can get confusing. So now we go into Lightroom and we go into the import panel. The import panel is um, in three sections. On the left hand side is where your pictures are coming from. This will be, in this case, your memory card. What you're importing, you choose which pictures you're bringing in and because you might not want to bring the whole memory card in every single time, in fact you won't want to. And on the right is where the pictures are going. Key thing here, destination. Here on the right hand side it says destination. This is where you tell Lightroom to put the pictures into the folder that you created on your hard drive. I can't emphasize strongly enough how important it is to do this and to understand how it works. Because often when people start up Lightroom, they start editing, they've imported their pictures, they think they're in Lightroom, and then they don't know where to find them. So it's really key to set up that file structure and understand where they are. Just a quick summary of that then. Choose where your photos are going to be stored. Create a catalog at a level that works for you. Import the photographs into Lightroom. Then we come into the library module, which is where we dice and slice and choose and edit, and I will actually show you how that works. We rate and rank as well, create collections. And then we go into the development module, which is where the actual developing editing takes place. And then we can export for a variety of purposes.
So let me just um, stop sharing that screen for a moment. And now I am going to go into Lightroom itself and share that screen, hopefully. Just bear with me. Okay, so I'm going into Lightroom Classic here and you'll see a blank screen, a blank uh, panel there. It's empty. I have not yet started to import any photographs. So I'm just going to share that again. Sorry, excuse me. Okay. So first thing to do then is to go up and change your preferences in this place here, as I mentioned, change it to prompt me. I can't emphasize that one strongly enough. It's really, really useful. There's an import button down here. Suggest you press that and then you'll get the import panel that I just described. On the left is my source, which is usually my memory card. But in this case, I've actually um, simulated a memory card inside my laptop. So normally that would be memory card. I'm going to go into here and I've got a memory card simulated in here. So I've come out of my dive, I've taken my memory card out of my camera, I've put it into my laptop, and now I'm going to import the photographs. There are lots of subtleties about how to import, which to import, what order to order them in, whether you want duplicates, whether you want the whole memory card. There's a lot to deal with, but we really haven't got time. So all I'm going to say now is, down the bottom here is this uncheck all button. Very strongly recommend you press that whenever you're importing pictures, because it prevents you from accidentally importing over and over and over again. There is another button up here that says, don't import suspected duplicates, which is a good, useful um, security blanket. But there's nothing stronger than clicking off uncheck all and making sure you don't bring everything in. So now I'm going to select what I know was my first dive. And I'm going to bring those pictures in, which is whipped coral shrimp, uh, Nemo, and this Lenny. So I'm going to click on the tick box there, but it'll only select the ones that I've chosen. These other ones in gray will not be coming in because I know they belong to a different dive. Now the all important thing on the right here is the destination. This is where me, I'm telling it where to put the photographs, not in Lightroom, that's just a catalogue reference, whereabouts my actual photos are going to go into my external hard drive. Here we've got a subfolder box. I recommend strongly that you don't have that ticked. It creates a hierarchy of subfolders which can get very confusing. There's also this organize box which um, also has other functions, but I recommend going into one folder. Again, it's a much more straightforward way of storing your images. Otherwise, hierarchies can be created that can get very confusing. Then you select the folder name that you have created on your hard drive as to where you want to put this particular dive. For me, I put the date and I put the dive site, and then I press the import button. So those photographs are now being imported into Lightroom. That's that, that's done. Okay, so now I'm in the library module. There are seven modules in Lightroom, but most of us only ever use these first two, so I'm going to focus on those. Library module is this grid or full screen module where you look at the actual photograph in a, in a, a kind of grid fashion. You can look at them full, or you can look at them like this in a panel. You can change the size of the thumbnails that you see. You can make them smaller or larger. There's a film strip down the bottom, which also has a, um, shows your pictures. Uh, and this way you can very quickly, the very first thing I do when I import a dive, is go through and delete the ones that I know are rubbish. I haven't got any in here because I've already done that. So I haven't got uh, time to show you that in detail now, but it's a very good tool to use. There are lots of keyboard presses you can use. For example, I can click on um, E to select a picture in its entirety and collect, select G to go back to the grid. I can select E to see the picture. I can 
black out the lights in the background by pressing L. I can make it full screen by pressing F. There are lots of keyboard presses. I, of course, haven't got time to cover right now, but um, we can find them out for you if you wish. So then there, we choose a picture which I'm going to develop and I go into the develop module. I'm actually going to develop this picture here, which is of a little Lenny. Um, so, oh, Gobi, um, one of those two. So I'm going to develop. The very, very first thing I recommend that you click is this button here. It is the, man, it is the white balance dropper. It's, uh, if I hover over it long enough there, white balance selector. I click on this, I click on an area in the picture which is neutral. Now, as I'm moving this across the picture, you can see in the top left over there, there is a navigator screen. If I click over the red area, you see it turns kind of blue, a bit nasty. If I click over this sort of bluey area, or this orangey area, it goes cyan. Now, what it's doing is it's taking that point that I'm pointing at and giving me the opposite end of it on the color, on the color wheel. That's why if I click neutral, I should get as near as possible to the coloring I want this picture to be. So all I did one there was click on a piece of neutral over here, click once and my picture is transformed I'll show you the before and after. That doesn't look that much yet, but what that has done is taken the sheen off that might not be the right white balance, and it's actually set it to a white balance which is more realistic based on this dropper tool. Now, there are so many tools in Lightroom, I just really have not got time to explain them all right now, but I can tell you that some of them are universal. They work on the whole picture and some of them you can pick out small portions of the picture. Um, like with the brush tool, this is the brush tool where I can select certain parts of the picture and edit in whichever way I wish. Now, when you select one of these tools at the top here, the, uh, another panel comes up which gives you options to use with that tool. So for example, this is my crop tool on the left here. If I click on that, I get a panel here which relates just to that tool and I can crop the picture in a little bit not too much and press it again and I've cropped so each tool has its own panel if I click on it again it'll show me what the original was if you want to go back to your absolute original there's a reset button down here where you can go back to the original picture and there are many many other tools that I absolutely do not have time to explain right now so all I'm going to say is Please, please, when you start with Lightroom, remember that it's extremely key to go into uh, a file structure and create a file structure that works for you and a catalog level that works for you. Those decisions before you even start using Lightroom are really critical, otherwise you will go around in many circles many times, believe me. Now, editing itself is a whole other subject I can cover in another webinar. For now, I'm going to uh, move on to the question and answer session uh, live, and I'm asking my colleague Alex to kick that off, please. Thank you. Hope you can uh, see that. Panelists, can you thumbs up for me? Uh, hopefully, thumbs up. Thank you. That's great. Okay, so. Um, I noticed when I was watching that presentation that I missed a couple of fairly key things during the import process. So I'm just going to cover those briefly now. I'm going to click down here, bottom left, the import button again. I'm not actually going to do an import. I just want to show you something about the import function. And that is at the top of the screen here, you can see four items. Don't worry about the left-hand one. Uh, I won't go into that one now. But there are these three here, copy, move, and add. They have different functions. Uh, the copy function will copy the pictures from your memory card and copy them into the hard drive where you've defined the folder. If you choose to use the move function, then that actually moves them off the memory card and they will no longer be there. I can't really think of an occasion where that would be terribly useful because then you've only got them in one place 
and it's always a good idea to have a backup. So I would never normally move them off my memory card until I've got at least another two backups of the hard drive. So I'm not sure why that would be useful, but that's what it does anyway. If you like clearing off your memory card immediately, I don't recommend it. And the add function, if you've previously put your photographs into the folder, but you haven't imported them into Lightroom, you might do this if you are in the field, you want to very quickly get your pictures onto the hard drive, you haven't got time to deal with Lightroom at the time, or you haven't got the updated version or it's not working or something. If you want to then add them subsequently into Lightroom, into the correct place, the right, the right catalog, then you can click on add and you don't then have to uh, think about where they're coming from. The add screen, it might not allow me to do it just now because I've got to, no, it won't allow me to do that just now. But it's a slightly different panel on the right hand side and it simply adds them to the catalog. So I just wanted to mention those three things about the import function. Uh, now, I am just going to very quickly show you a couple of editing functions. First of all, I will just show you what I was trying to show you when the screen went blank. So here I can use the library module to do all sorts of slicing, dicing, as I said, deleting. Um, I can press uh, E and bring that up large. I can shut the lights off behind it. So with the L key, I can click on the F and bring it up full on the screen like that. This is a way of just viewing your picture in whichever way you find most useful. When I first import uh, a dive's worth of pictures, as I said before, I do actually go through them and delete the ones that I don't want anymore, the ones that are complete and utter rubbish. And if anyone tells you they haven't got any, they're lying. Everyone has rubbish after every dive. So um, I do do that at the beginning. Um, and I just want to show you very quickly now the develop module, because there are lots of other bits of the library module, but I'm going to go straight into the develop module because I know that people like to know how to develop their photographs. I'm not going to do that one. I'm just going to go in here. So the turtle I showed you at the beginning, this is a one in the same series. I'm going to show you a very few tweaks that you can do right at the start of your Lightroom experience and it will be useful. The very first thing I do in any development for any picture ever is click on this white balance selector. And it doesn't matter what lighting I've had, how deep I've been, whether the sun's shining, what the white balance has been doing. Uh, I did have strobes on this turtle. I still want to make sure I have the right white balance. So I pick up my dropper and I bring it across to the picture and I try and find an area which is neutral. Now you can't do this in every single picture, but you can usually find something neutral in most pictures. And I can see that this little part of the turtle's um, body here is a fairly good neutral. And I can tell that from this grid here, which has got the uh, various colors in it. Hey, if you look Jill, down here, could I stop yeah. you for a moment? You Sorry, can. it's doing that white screen thing again on our end. You see could it? you? Oh, yeah, man. it is. So it's a weird glitchy uh -huh. thing between this and that. So maybe try stop sharing it and then start sharing it again and see if it fixes itself. I will try. Very did it peculiar. work to start with then? Yeah, it did. And then it went oh. white again. It's very strange. Yeah, it's currently white. Purple? No, it's, it's white. still white. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, I don't know. Maybe just do some navigating around Lightroom and see if it will like go back to normal. Like maybe go into your library yeah. or something. And okay. See what... I'll try. I'll try going. No, first. still white. Oh, wow. It's all white now. Oh, huh. Dear. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's dear. <laughs> that's very peculiar um, um, hmm. well hmm. it's a bit hard to demonstrate Lightroom unless I can actually show it on the screen so that's the truth um, I'm going to yeah. have to I'm going to have to pull out from that then um, All right. I can say a couple of things let, let me just try once more hold on sure sure is that showing it's doing the white thing still okay we'll have to give up on that then um, yeah. Sorry, everybody. That's that's just something which uh, is a glitch with our connections there. Yeah. Um, I did just want to say a couple of things then, um, which I referenced during the talk. Uh, one was that I mentioned that um, Lightroom works on a cataloging system and doesn't change your original picture. Your original picture stays 
Um, yes, Alex. Sorry, one person said try hitting the key that you use to darken the backlight because that's when it started going wonky on us. Okay. Uh, but I've come out of that because... Oh, shoot. Yeah, true, true. Um, is that still white? Still yeah, white. still white. Okay, never Thank mind. You. Good suggestion. <laughs> it's just potential work. troubleshooting, but no. <laughs> I don't mind trying anything, but... Um, Sorry so I just that. wanted to say then quickly about Lightroom that um, the, the catalogue stores a reference to the photograph, as I mentioned, but when you actually edit, you apply changes, which unfortunately I couldn't show you just now. Um, maybe we can do that again. Uh, and those are also stored in the catalog. So all references across every single change you do, you can do a virtual copy of the picture, you can take it right back to basics and get rid of all the changes, you can do all sorts of things. You can even go directly into Lightroom from, uh, sorry, into Photoshop from Lightroom and have a, a a direct bridge across to it if you like and then make a couple of changes in Photoshop and come straight back into Lightroom and those changes are there without exiting either of the programs so the catalog stores all these changes but it doesn't change the original picture at all and that's the key thing about one of the key things about Lightroom that it doesn't degrade the picture so um, another thing I wanted to mention when you're doing an import is that you can apply keywords at that point uh, keywords are extremely useful way of filtering your pictures. When you import, you're importing an entire uh, dive's worth in our case. So you will be applying universal keywords. So you wouldn't be applying them per particular animal or scene because that doesn't make sense. You'd be applying them per dive. So the dive site, your name, the location, the country, that sort of thing. Um, you can do that. You can do that and several other things when you actually do the import. Um, I mentioned about not importing the whole memory card. I don't know about you guys, but me, I use the same memory card for many dives in a row, many days in a row. And therefore, I don't want to keep bringing in every single picture every single time. It's a mistake I made at the beginning of my Lightroom experience years ago. Um, so it's something to look out for. And that's why I recommend very highly pressing that uncheck all um, button or un select all, I can't remember what it's actually called, um, so that you can then control exactly what you bring in. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention and I can't now show you on the screen is uh, collections, which is another really useful way of making uh, collections of different photographs. And it's another way of identifying groups, dicing and slicing. So for example, if you have pictures of um, fish eyes, you can create a collection called I, put all your fish eyes in there. Then you can also make another collection called scorpion fish and put all your scorpion fish in there. Some scorpion fish may be in both collections and it makes no difference whatsoever to the picture itself. The picture itself is not moving anywhere. It's just a reference on it. So you click on the eye collection, you'll see everything that's, got, um, that's in that collection. And the things can be in many, many, many varied collections, but it's a really useful tool for pulling together common pictures. Um, Lightroom is a, a, a hands-on thing, so there's only so much I can really ramble on about talking. I could ramble on all night, but I won't. So I think it's probably a good idea if we, um, if we have any questions to maybe look at that now. Yeah, good <laughs> idea. There, there is. So what oh. I'm going to suggest we do is I'm going to do a question. I'm going to read it off and then you can answer. And if you can multitask for me while you're answering, close out a Lightroom and then try going back into it and just see if it remedies itself. And then maybe we could do a quick little thing with one photo. Um, sure. So in the meantime, um, Charlie is asking, can a photographer underwater or above water uh, use Lightroom with photos taken in PDF or do you need to use RAW or a different format? Additionally, does it use a lot of memory on a computer? Um, and is it fairly uh, tech or uh, uh, user friendly for people who aren't super technically knowledgeable? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a, a number of questions there. It I'm is going, a bunch of things. <laughs> I'm going to answer the second one uh, first. Um, you asked if 
you, oh gosh, I can't remember what the second one was now. Uh, second yeah. one was does like how much memory does Lightroom take up yes, um, right. on a computer? When yeah. I when I buy, thank you, um, Alex. When I yeah, buy sure. my laptops, I always um, buy low spec memory. Everyone always rushes to the shop to get the highest spec memory. Um, I may be controversial with this view, but I don't use my laptop for streaming movies or anything like that. So I buy the lowest spec. Everything on my laptop these days is absolutely plenty to run what I need to run, which are the applications I run, which is things like Lightroom, Facebook, online, whatever, all that stuff. I use documents and um, spreadsheets and things. And um, keynote presentations, I've got loads of those on my laptop. People get a bit hung up on memory. You don't need the highest spec. All my storage space is on my hard drive, which is external. So, um, for example, I've got my, my master one here. This is just one of those Seagate, I think it's Seagate, um, hard drives. So that is where the memory is required. That's, that's a two terabyte one. That's for the pictures because I do shoot in RAW. That's where they uh, are stored. I don't need to store, I, I, I can't recommend strongly enough not storing pictures on your laptop. There is absolutely no point. They just take up space unnecessarily, use an external hard drive. Um, PDFs, I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, why would you be storing pictures in a PDF uh, anyway? I'm not sure about that one. All right. Um, technically, and then how, how hard is it to figure out? <laughs> yeah. Um, like anything, you, uh, you don't get in a car and immediately know how to drive. You do need to learn Lightroom, just like any other function. Um, so if you have learned the process, which I just explained the very high level of just now, then it's not unintuitive. It is intuitive. It is easy to use. Once you set up your own procedure and you understand the bits that you need to use for what you want it for, it's not complicated. It's not technical, as long as you're taught properly. All right. Cool. I'm checking on Facebook now if we've got anything on there because that's it for our Zoom section, question wise. Um, da -da -da -da. Just going to try this once more. Yeah, sure. Yeah, give that a try. See if it'll work. Yeah. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's try. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I'm going to go straight into the develop module then with this turtle. All right, let's give it a shot. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> just doubt if it goes off. So I'm okay. just picking up this first thing that I use, which is this white balance selector, which is a dropper over here on the edit panel on the right. Um, bringing it across to the turtle. Can you still see it? Yep, all good. Okay. So I'm going to select a piece of the picture that's nearest to neutral that I can get. Now you'll see on the top left hand side, there's a small navigation uh, box there. And you can see there what the effect is going to be when you drop that dropper somewhere. So if I just take it over to the blue section, look what happens to the navigation screen. You can see that I hope. It's gone yes. uh, horribly fluorescent red. Now, the reason it's done that is because that's the opposite of this blue in the color wheel. So what it's doing is it's saying, well, if that's neutral, if that blue is neutral, that's what I'm going to do to the picture. You can use the navigator panel over there to give you an idea of what's going to happen when you do select a neutral point. And I think that there is a pretty good one. That's given me a nice bit of red back in, a bit of orange, a bit of yellow. Uh, the next thing I do, I always do that on every picture, by the way. The next thing I do is generally do a little bit of dehaze down here, not too much because it can go horribly wrong, and a little bit of exposure increase there if it's a fairly dark situation. Now I'm just going to show you a before and after. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Can you see that? Yes. Great. I just pressed three buttons to get from there to there. Now that's how powerful Lightroom is, even if you don't know much about how to use it, even without all the, um, and believe me, there are many, 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 many other things you can do, but I have just improved that picture from that to that in three clicks. So um, 
if you learn how to use all the other functions over here on the edit panel on the right, then you're really in for a chance of using this properly. Um, I will, I'm just going to show you one other trick that I use. Um, it's called chromatic aberration. It's a very, very sort of small thing, but it does affect every picture. I'm just going to go back into the library. This might be a bit ambitious, but let's give it a try. Do tell me if it's gone. So back to this little Blenny. That's um, good. Good. Okay, great. So this panel on the right hand side, I'll just tell you some of the edit tools are universal, as in they affect the entire picture. And some tools are specific. They only affect a small part of the picture. So it just depends which tool you choose. This panel at the top has six tools on it and each one has their own sub panel. So if I click on one of these, I will click on the prop box. You see, um, I'll do it off and on again. The, um, a, a separate panel has come up with just things that relate to that tool. You can see also it's set it into a um, third uh, rule of thirds perspective. Now I'm going to crop this picture a little bit. I don't generally crop very much, but I'm just going to crop it a little bit to crop out that messy bit at the top right. That's how I did that. Very, very quick. Very, very easy. I'm now just going to show you this. Uh, of course, I haven't done my white balance. I must do that immediately. Done that. Thank you. Now, um, this chromatic aberration, I did discover something in this particular picture which demonstrates it very well. I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom right in. There's a little tiny mark here. You can see it's a piece of sand or a piece of backscatter or something like that. And normally I would actually just um, spot remove it out, which I will show you how to do in a moment. But there is this little um, tick box down the very, very bottom of the editing panel down here, which is called Remove Chromatic Aberration. And when I tick on that, you should see a marked difference in this dot. So keep an eye on it. I'm going to tick on it now. You see that that rainbow halo effect has disappeared. I'll click it off again and you see it comes back again. Now it may seem a very tiny thing, but a professional photographer I used to work with in the Red Sea um, can see that with their naked eye. And she said to me, always get rid of it on every picture, ever. So I always do, as a matter of course, click that button, no matter what. It will improve the photograph. It's extremely subtle, but it will. So now I'm going to go back to the main picture and just show you how to remove dots in a picture. So this offending dot here, one of these tools is called Spot Removal Tool. It's the second one along here at the top. I'm going to click on that. And then another panel comes up here, as I explained, all these things have their own sub panels. I can affect the size of the dot that I'm going to use. You can see it here on the screen. I can also change it with two fingers like that. So large, small, depending on the size of the dot. I can choose the feathering outside of the dot, the size of that, and I can choose the opacity. I always keep it on 100. I'm usually using, removing bits of sand and things like that. So I'm just going to, there's one more thing down the bottom of the screen, which is super useful. It's called visualize spots down here. I'm just pointing down to the bottom of the uh, panel here underneath to the left of his eye. And I'm going to click on visualize spots. And when I do that, you get a very different view of the picture. You get um, emphasized where there are dots that are not necessarily visible to the naked eye. There's one here, for example, there's one here. If I take that off again, you can't really easily see those. So you might wonder, well, why am I getting rid of them then? Well, it all affects the final quality of the picture, especially if you're printing it. So it's always a good idea to get rid of these particular dots. But as you can see, you can't really see them with the naked eye, but you can if you put this visualized dots on. It's an extremely useful tool. So I'm just going to click on those few now. And anyone that thinks it's cheating, it's not cheating. It's called Lightroom because it used to be a dark room and this sort of thing went on in there too. So I've just got rid of those um, few there. Now you can see that one has gone and several of them have gone around here. Uh, now, I was advised once, if you have to spend more than five minutes removing dots from a picture, 
then you probably haven't got a good picture to start with. You've got to have a good picture to start with, with any kind of editing. It's no good. If it's blurry, it's never going to be in focus. So um, don't waste your time working on pictures that aren't good enough to start with. So what else have we got up here? We've got um, the gradient tool. I'm going to go briefly back to my host told me I didn't have to hurry. So I'm carrying on for now until somebody tells me to stop. <laughs> um, just going to go back into the library and bring my turtle up again. I'm going to go into the develop module with my turtle and I'm going to show you what this gradient tool does. This is very useful for underwater. It's not so obvious on this picture. Might help if I bring the exposure up a little bit more. This is a gradient tool because normally underwater, especially if we're taking wide angle shots, we have a lot lighter at the top than the bottom normally, if the sun's up there and the deep is down there. This is a way of just reducing the glare on the top in a nice gradient fashion. So I've taken the marker. Every time you select one of these tools, by the way, you get a different marker on the screen. So you can see when I select the dot tool, I get, um, just take that off for now. I get a, a round circle which has a feather around it. I click on this gradient tool, I get a plus sign. Um, and I can go up to a corner of the picture, this light bit. I'm gonna bring the gradient across from the top of the picture like that. And then I'm going to just reduce the exposure on that top bit and it just darkens off that corner very slightly. This may not be the best picture to show this on, but it's a very useful tool when you have a really good picture, but you have a glary corner and you want to get rid of that glare or just a little bit too overexposed or the blue isn't quite the right color. Uh, that's a really useful tool for that with underwater pictures. Um, what else can I show you quickly? So I'm not going to go down into any of those. Um, another one I use fairly often is shadows. I'm just going to show you how that functions on a different picture. And then I'll probably call it a day on the editing for now. Go into one of these abstract coral pictures uh, works quite nicely. So I'll just go into develop with this one. Do my white balance always. Hasn't made much difference on that one. Just bring down the glare. I can show you actually this gradient tool on the right hand side here, because that's a little bit bright. So I just bring that down a little bit on that side just to even out the picture a bit. Now I'm going to just bring up this shadow. There's a one here called shadows tool. I'm gonna to bring that up and you'll see that it brings out the detail in the background where you've got this lovely detail on the coral here. I wouldn't normally use shadows, but this is a, an abstract picture. So I, I think it really works just to bring out a little bit of the detail underneath the corals there. Each picture you have to edit on its merit. And that's why you can only really get used to Lightroom by using, using, using. The same with learning photography, photoing, 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 review, photo review. Um, it's the same with Lightroom. You have to experiment, you have to practice. This is a very rich program and I could go on all night, but I'm not going to because it's um, already quarter to nine. So I'm going to leave it there with the editing now. Um, well, thanks, Jill. We, all, we have a couple more questions that are all grouped together. Um, so is this uh, version of Lightroom that you're demonstrating right now the newest one? It is. Okay. Um, then how often do you change or upgrade to a new version? Well, that's a good question, actually, because um, if you sign up for a subscription, which uh, you really do need to do these days because everything is online, you, the subscription is um, just $10 a month. Uh, and for that, you get, um, you get the Creative Cloud version as well, if you did want to use that when you're traveling or something. Um, you get the um, Photoshop, you get lots of other Adobe products in that subscription. But by subscribing, you get regular updates and the Adobe um, source will tell you when it's time to update, like any other thing. Like if you've got Word on your computer or um, Excel or any of those things, it tells you when there's an update available and then you go in and you update it. If you've got a, um, not that I'm casting any aspersions, but if you've uh, obtained a copy by other means, you will not be getting those updates. Right. And um, 
if you've got some kind of um, student version, I believe you don't get the updates. You can get a cheaper version. You used to be able to. I don't know these days. But basically, Adobe will tell you when it's ready to update. All right, cool. All right. Um, then what? Still, someone asked whether you can give a quick summary of your complete workflow again, please. Uh, just uh, verbally. Yeah, verbally. Yeah. Sure. Um, I get out of the water. <laughs> I dry my camera off. <laughs> um, I take my memory card out of the camera. I put it into my laptop. I have a external hard drive plugged into my laptop. I create a folder on my external hard drive, which matches the dive I've just done or the dives I've done if I'm doing it at the end of the day. I actually never do it any longer than that. But if you're doing it at the end of a trip, then you'd put every dive into the, uh, as a folder into your hard drive. Then I open Lightroom. I go to the import module and I select which photographs I want to take from my memory card, which won't be all of them because I've used it for multiple dives. So I have a thing at the bottom of the screen which, where you can order the way the pictures are shown to you. I always have that on capture time. And as a side note, I always make sure my camera is set to the correct time for where I am. So if I travel from uh, the Caribbean to Indonesia, I'll be moving that clock on my camera by 12 or 13 hours uh, when I get there. That's quite important to get a sense of reality of when you actually take the pictures and some competitions demand it actually. Um, so then I will, uh, because I have them in capture order, I know the order that the dives um, came in at and I will select a particular dive, just one dive from start to finish. I will select those photographs only. I'll tick them and then I will go across to the destination panel on the right hand side and I will select where I want to put them into the folder that I've just created with the name of the dive that I've just done that I'm importing. And I will set a few other parameters on the screen like I will do a few universal keywords and I always rename my files as well. So I name them to a standardized format that I have, which has my company name and the dive site and the date. Um, just so I've got some standardization, but I'm a bit of a control freak. You might not want to do that, but I always do. Otherwise, they end up being called img.nef, which isn't very useful. Um, I then press the import button and uh, then it goes ping. And um, that's it. Oh, and then I start editing them. <laughs> um, the thing I haven't had time to explain, because um, there, it is a very, very rich program, um, and we'll need to be doing a lot more of these, I think, but um, is the export. So why and when and how do you export? Well, there's an export button next to the import button, and you can export in, uh, with a large number of parameters attached to that as well. You can, attack, you can export as a TIFF file, a JPEG file, um, I think you can, I can't remember what the other formats are. There's quite a few of them. You can choose the size, the resolution. You can choose um, whether you put a uh, copyright on it there and then. You can, you can do all sorts of many things when you export a picture. You might want to export it for um, social media, in which case you'll make it fairly small for screen size. You might want to export it for printing on the side of a house, in which case it'll obviously be large. And um, it, it just depends what you want to use the picture for. But my strong advice again, and I've seen people do this, they'll go through, edit their pictures, choose their favorite ones, and then export them and put them in another folder somewhere. So why? There is absolutely no point in doing that. Lightroom remembers all the changes you've made and you can make multiple virtual copies of the same picture so that you can then use them for different things. You can turn one into black and white, export that in black and white. So um, don't, you don't need to export things until you need them, is the point. Just uh, have them in your folder and have them on tap when you need to call on them. So exporting is a whole nother discipline. That's my workflow. Then I have a glass of wine normally. The most critical part, of course. <laughs> oh, look, there's one here. Cheers. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. It is well, nighttime. Jill. It is okay. nighttime. Yeah, it says. <laughs> 
important point. Thank you for that. That was super informative and a lot to digest. So I'm sure everyone will have plenty to think about now. So thanks. Um, okay. Coming back Thank to you. this uh, broadcast again, we drop off a few time. So what I'm going to do after this, just like yesterday, I'm going to uh, stitch all the, all the entire uh, lessons into one one's, uh, video and broadcast it later sometime today. So yeah, look out for that this afternoon. All right, and then one last thing. Michael, would you like to tell everybody about these wonderful books available on the screen? Um, we have this uh, Ocean Geographic's uh, live special of all these books, uh, we, which uh, I have, uh, we have put up in the past, so offering special, including postage. So look at the screen now. We have the master class on offer at $25, the advanced digital, and the coral reef uh, invertebrates, fishes and invertebrates, and also a rare collection of uh, stack on coral, which I did with Dr. Carden Wallace. So all this is going at a special price and including postage and packaging right to your door. And that is on for this whole month of uh, April. Good and next thing is uh, we will have uh, tomorrow, we have a very special uh, session with Matt, Matthew Smith. And he is going to teach us techniques on above and below techniques uh, uh, shooting half and half. So he's on tomorrow, same time, same place, and uh, sharing with us his technique and the port he used and uh, how he do it and where he does it. So be sure to tune in tomorrow, same time. Do we have time for one more quick question? Yep, go ahead. <laughs> okay, Jill wants to know from Jill, when you've messed up your catalog system, can you fix it? <laughs> You, you can, and of course you always mess it up at the beginning. I certainly mess mine up multiple times. Uh, my view, and this comes from my very long ago IT days, is not to try and fix it if it's gone a bit wrong, it's to start again. And this is why it's always really important to keep your pictures, not delete them ever. Um, I did have a student recently who imported her photographs into Lightroom, thought they were in Lightroom, deleted them off the memory card. The laptop crashed and she lost her photographs. So, um, uh, yes, you can, but, but I think it's always better to step back and start from scratch. I had a massive um, crash uh, about three years ago where I, uh, luckily I had everything backed up, so I was able to recreate everything from scratch, but I did start again from scratch because it's cleaner and safer that way. If you need any help with that, I'm, I'm happy to um, help you with that if you want to reach out to me. Uh, for me personally, when in the field, when I download uh, pictures from memory card to a portable drive like you, Jill, um, through the years, I've accumulated enough memory cards. I do not format that cards in the field again. So I will just Never keep on using it. I'll just have stacks of them. I only come back when I back up the backup drive on another on another drive, then I would use those cards in the next next trip. That's how I do it. But I know some people yeah. you know don't do that. But I think that is that is that is precious because sometimes your your backup drive may 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 break or may, for some reason doesn't well, function. It does. So you have yeah, to memory that means, Yeah. Absolutely. That that's exactly what I do, Michael. I would never ever reformat my card until I've got things backed up at least three times. And even then, I've got lots of cards which I've never formatted. I just buy a new one. Okay, thank you, Judas. Excellent sessions. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again. Alex, anything else? I do, I, I do have to read you one of our comments. Our, mm -hmm. our last comment says, Jill, after listening to your presentation, I realized that I need to text one of my employees immediately and pay him for the photos he edited for me in Lightroom. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know <laughs> enlightenment has happened fantastic <laughs> all right cool well thank you everyone thank you, who attended thank, thank you. you michael thank you jill and thank we'll see you all back here tomorrow see you tomorrow okay bye bye bye, -bye. <laughs>